This person presents with developmental asymmetry of his pelvis, so uh, no amount of treatment is going to align his pelvis. His right ilium appears lower and slightly more forward than the left side. And it's not treatable with exercise, which we've already done, and he's been doing therapy exercises for a very long time. Um, testing the micro motion shows us that he has normal motion translating through the pelvis. And this tests posterior rotation. And this tests side glide. That's normal. This tests side glide. Okay, let's have you on your stomach. And when he lies on his stomach, he's higher on the right iliac shelf to a considerable degree. Okay. When we come underneath the sit bones, it's a little more subtle, but he's higher on the he's higher on the right side. Um, but he has good force translation superiorly. Anteriorly on the ischium, has good mobility in terms of rotation on each side. He has good inferior mobility. Um, capturing the PSIS, he has good lateral spring mobility. So this is a developmental pattern. His sacrum moves in all directions, all four quadrants spring. Um, backward bending movement is good, forward bending movement is good, inferior glide mobility is good. So because motion is normal in all directions, then we know this is a developmental asymmetry. Now when he goes to sitting, his, the posture of his pelvis changes, um, and we did some experimenting, and we found that He's uncomfortable if we place a quarter inch lift on the seat pan. Okay, so we just used a thick magazine and we found that sitting on with this under the left sit bone is tolerated well. And so the experiment is going to be that whenever he sits for more than 15 minutes, we're going to have him sit on a magazine um, raising the left side to determine if it gives him more long-term comfort. And when the pelvis is asymmetrical from uh, it's developed that way, um, then when they go to sit, the seat pan tries to force them into a false sense of symmetry. So it actually makes their lumbar spine and pelvis have to go asymmetrically. Uh, more so than it already is. So sometimes a simple lift under one sit bone can be helpful. And I hope that this is informative. Um, and you should have your clinician evaluate your pelvis to determine if you have a fixed developmental asymmetry and then you can experiment with this method of uh, making sitting more comfortable. And one other thing that I'll point out is that for some people, a simple foam roll, uh, we do carry this, we do sell it, but you could just roll up two washcloths, fold them twice, roll them up and tape them. And for some, for some folks, taking this support Finding the trochanter, just rock your knee left and right, and you'll feel the trochanter bump move, okay? And you place it under the trochanter of the hip, and sometimes that creates improved sitting posture. And I'm one of those people that has a developmental asymmetry. Oh. And um, in my truck, I actually have a quarter inch cork under the left side of the floor mat, and that raises my left leg a little bit. So that's another thing to experiment mm. is a sitting 
heel lift mm -hmm. in my desk upstairs mm -hmm. I have a quarter inch cork under the left side where my foot rests mm -hmm. and that helps my that enhances my sitting comfort mm -hmm. so I hope this is informative not everyone with pelvic asymmetry needs a you know a treatment to align the pelvis mm -hmm. and clinicians need to pay attention and be able to tell clients when they have one that is not changeable mm -hmm. thanks thank you